the state of Texas Tech was the subject of an annual event held last week here on campus. Coming up, we'll have the details on where the university stands heading into its second century. A lawyer who made history with her willingness to step forward in the face of adversity recently stopped by the Texas Tech campus. Find out how this VIP is helping people at Tech and around the nation speak truth to power. And the Texas Tech soccer team is hoping to keep their unbeaten record intact as they take on another Big 12 powerhouse on the home field. MCTV's Joshua Ermis has a preview of Red Raider Soccer's weekend schedule, along with a look at the rest of Tech Athletics' busy scheduling sports. This is the MCTV Weekday Update. Welcome to the Thursday edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. I'm Elena Khadishvili. And I'm Diago Aguilar. Texas Tech University is nearing the end of its first 100 years of existence with the centennial celebration wrapping up in December. Earlier this week, a special event took place here on campus to celebrate the final semester of Tech's first century of academic service. On Tuesday, the annual State of the University address took place in the Majin Theater. TTU President Lawrence Kuvanek spoke to the audience and those watching online, highlighting the milestones achieved by the university over the past year. Skuvanek publicly announced a new record enrollment for the 2023 fall semester of 40,944 students. That number includes 12,000 new students who are working towards their degree at Texas Tech this year. Along with the latest statistics, Skuvanek also took time to recognize the efforts of members of the university community who, hel who have helped contribute to Texas Tech's continued growth. I think the one thing we wanted to emphasize in the State of the University Address um, were stories about our people, students, faculty, staff. At the same time, uh, I was pleased that we could announce we had a record enrollment. Um, and more so than just that number, I mentioned the great increase we've had in graduation rates. Um, I don't know that we showed it, but um, we've graduated almost 10,000 students this past year. Skuvanek's address also looked towards the future, giving details on a strategic plan for the beginning of Tech's next 100 years. Skuvanek also spoke about the Texas University Fund, which could provide more money to the university if it's approved by voters in November. The fund could increase the university's research budget by $44 million if the proposal passes later this fall. Texas Tech has a large Greek community with more than 50 fraternities and sororities active at the university. And all this week, one campus group is hosting a special set of activities to help bring the Greek community together. Fraternity and sorority life is currently hosting FSL week with a series of events around campus. FSL is a university group that helps organize, administrate, and guide the Greek com community. On Monday, fraternity and sorority life hosted the FSL kickoff event in the sub ballroom. Students were encouraged to stop by from 7 to 9 p.m. to meet members from the various organizations, pick up some free swag, and take part in an important pledge. We also have this banner where we're having people take a pledge against hazing across the Texas Tech University campus in this community. Um, we hope to showcase this at a future event and just overall for the Texas Tech population to provide to see as well. The Raiders Don't Haze pledge banner was available throughout the event, encouraging students to help eliminate hazing in the Greek community. Monday's kickoff was also used to promote the remaining FSL week events, which included a brunch and dry social in the sub on Wednesday. Tomorrow, FSL week comes to an end with the FSL Olympics and field day in Urbanovsky Park. The event will feature volleyball, basketball, a sack race, and more. There will also be free food and drinks for all attendees. Tomorrow's FSL Olympics and Field Day starts at 5 p.m. and it's open to the entire Greek community. It may still seem like the semester just began, but for many students, December graduation is just around the corner. With that in mind, one college hosted a biannual event, featuring a huge one-stop shop to help students take another step towards their future careers. The fall edition of the Rolls College of Business Career Fair was held at the Lubbock Civic Center on Wednesday. Students from the college had the chance to stop by the event from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. and meet with hundreds of potential employers from around the world. Attendees could learn about options for full and part-time employment, as well as internships and other pathways to a future job. The fair also offered students one of the university's biggest opportunities to network and learn about the many options available after graduation. 
Students from outside the Rose College were also invited to attend the event from 1 to 3 p.m. on Wednesday afternoon. The Rose Career Fair is held every year in the fall and spring semesters. If you missed this semester's Rose Career Fair, there are still several events scheduled this fall for students looking for jobs, internships or networking opportunities. For more information about future fairs and events here on campus, visit the University Career Center's website at careercenter.ttu.edu. It's been a hot start to the fall season, with the Lubbock area experiencing temperatures in the 80s and 90s every day since the equinox on Saturday. We haven't set any more records since the first day of autumn, but it definitely hasn't felt like fall has truly arrived here on the South Plains. But could we see some changes as we head into October? Let's take a look at the MCTV forecast. Another bright and sunny day is visible on the MCTV tower camp. There's been a few clouds in the sky throughout the day, but otherwise, we've seen lots of sunshine since mid-morning. Temperatures are currently sitting in the high 80s, but we should reach the low 90s again before sunset. Tonight, temperatures will drop back in the upper 60s with a slight breeze. We'll see a few more clouds this evening, but it should remain mostly clear throughout midnight. Tomorrow, we'll start the day with partly cloudy skies, but by noon, it should be bright and sunny. The final Friday of September will also feature an, another afternoon of highs in the low 90s and will continue to see breezy conditions through the day. On Saturday, the end of September, will feature a slight drop in temperatures with highs back in the 80s. Temperatures will be warm most of the day, including the Texas Tech versus Houston football game at the Jones. Temperatures should start in the mid 80s at kickoff, but it could reach near 90 by the end of the game on Sunday, we'll see another slight drop in temperatures with a high expected in the mid-80s. Later in the day, the potential for thunderstorm returns to the forecast with rain chances starting in the late evening and continuing through midnight. After that, rain chances will remain in the forecast for the near future. Looking ahead, the chance for rain and an even bigger drop in temperatures is expected during the first week of October. We could also start to see colder temperatures at night with lows dropping into the 50s by midweek. The Texas Tech campus hosts many events throughout the school year, including multiple lectures by important people from here on campus and beyond. Earlier this week, one VIP, whose story marked an important point in history, took time to speak up for those who may otherwise not be heard. MCTV's Carmen Brown stopped by the sub to bring us the story. A little over 30 years ago, a woman testified before Congress. Today, she's continuing that conversation as she takes the stage right here in the Allen Theater. That woman is Dr. Anita Hill. In 1991, years before the Me Too movement, she testified that a Supreme Court nominee, Justice Clarence Thomas, sexually harassed her. This moment in Dr. Hill's life was the beginning to a lifelong commitment to advocacy. This week, the professor made a second visit to Texas Tech after stopping by the campus five years ago to speak out once again. The last five years have been very hard, very, I mean, in fact, brutal on a whole range of people. And we're at this moment where I think they're getting, it's getting harder. People are feeling alienated by policies and laws that are being contemplated, in some cases passed. As times change, Dr. Hill's impact is not. She is hoping for others to aspire to make a difference. Even when things are difficult, there is always a way to move through that time and to grow from it and build on it. And I'll use my own example to show that. For one Texas Tech student, Dr. Hill's ideology was inspiration for an idea and Dr. Hill's return to campus. Started off as our uh, Women and Gender Studies practicum students um, project for her uh, fall uh, 2022 um, in the semester project. So I have to give full credit to Autumn Ronhill. Um, she is an amazing student and uh, she proposed and it was accepted. Like Braunhill, Texas Tech School of Law student Audrey Johnson is inspired by Dr. Hill to leave a legacy as a change maker. So it really pushes me to not stop and to keep going 30, 40, 50 years in the future. According to Dr. Hill, that change is powered by the people. I want people to understand that the real power that we have comes about when we come together. Reporting for MCTV, Carmen Brown. The fall calendar for Texas Tech Athletics is once again full with several teams hoping to improve their conference records. MCTV's Joshua Ermis joins us now in studio with a full rundown of this weekend's events in sports. Joshua? Thank you, Elena and Diego. 
Texas Tech Athletics has a jam-packed weekend featuring two soccer matches, two volleyball matches, and a pivotal football game at the Jones. Also, a former Red Raider is representing Europe in the Ryder Cup this weekend. We'll start with Texas Tech soccer. Number 14 ranked Texas Tech soccer will be hosting a pair of Big 12 matches this weekend, starting tonight against Oklahoma. Last time out, the Red Raiders defeated the Baylor Bears in Waco to improve their undefeated record to 9-0-2 overall. Tonight at 6, Tech will face another team that is undefeated in the Big 12. The Sooners come into the John Walker Soccer Complex 2-0-1 in conference play. Texas Tech is currently in a three-way tie at the top of the Big 12 with Oklahoma State and conference newcomer UCF. Texas Tech currently stands at 9-0-2 overall and 3-0 in Big 12 play. They host Oklahoma tonight at 7 p.m. and the Cincinnati Bearcats on Sunday at 1 p.m. Texas Tech Volleyball will be in action on the road this weekend against the TCU Horned Frogs. The Red Raiders are coming off of a 1-1 one one homestand against the 17th ranked Kansas Jayhawks, giving Tech their first ranked win in two years. TCU is also coming off of a 1-1 one one start to Big 12 play. This weekend will serve as Tech's first road test in the conference this season. Texas Tech's record heading into Fort Worth stands at 8-6 overall and 1-1 one one in the Big 12. They'll play two matches against TCU at Schollmeyer Arena. The first will be at 6 p.m. tonight and the second at 6 p.m. tomorrow. Red Raider football is back at the Jones this Saturday as they host the visiting Houston Cougars in Big 12 play. Texas Tech football is coming off of a loss in their first Big 12 contest of the season last week against West Virginia, 13-20. In the loss, quarterback Tyler Shuck went down with a leg injury and was replaced by backup Baron Morton. Morton will be getting his first start of the season and will do so for the foreseeable future. The other starting quarterback is a former Red Raider himself. Donovan Smith replaced Tyler Shuck last year after his collarbone injury. He went 2-2 two two as the starter, beating both the Texas Longhorns and his current team, the Houston Cougars, before being replaced by Baron Morton. Texas Tech will be hosting Parents Night as well as honoring the newest Texas Tech Hall of Fame and Hall of Honor members, including Cliff Kingsbury, Matt Wingo, and the late great Mike Leach. Texas Tech currently sits at 1-3 overall and 0-1 in Big 12 play. The game will kick off at 2.30 p.m. on Saturday at Jones AT&T Stadium here in Lubbock. Finally, Texas Tech alum Ludwig Eberg begins competition for Team Europe in the Ryder Cup tomorrow morning. Aberg was selected by Captain Luke Donald to represent Europe against Team USA in the biannual Ryder Cup that is currently being held in Rome, Italy. Aberg was the first was the fastest Ryder Cup selection in history after only being officially in the PGA for four months and competing in the fewest PGA events before being selected for the Ryder Cup with just nine. You can watch Ludwig tee off in the Ryder Cup tomorrow at 7:50 a.m. on USA. That's all for Texas Tech Sports. Now back to Elena and Diego. Thanks, Joshua. Tech Athletics isn't the only ones with a busy calendar this weekend. There's dozens of events going on both on and off campus from now through Sunday. One of those events is heading into its last days before closing down for another year. But in the meantime, you still have a chance to grab a corn dog, a lemonade, and a jump on a roller coaster for a wild ride. The 106th edition of the Panhandle South Plains Fair is ongoing at the fairgrounds east of campus off the Marshall Sharp Freeway. The annual 10-day event features food vendors, agricultural exhibits, local businesses, and a midway full of rides and games. The fair started last, last Thursday and since then thousands of area residents have had a chance to enjoy the fall tradition which started in 1914. The fair includes several promotional days including tonight's college night. Students with the college ID can get into the fair for $5 all evening. Today is also wristband day with $40 wristbands available for the unlimited rides in the midway from 3 to 11 p.m. The 106th annual Panhandle South Plains Fair continues from now through Saturday with paid admission today and through tomorrow from 1 p.m. to 11 p.m. and Saturday from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. So, Elaine, have you had a chance to go to the fair this year? Yes, I did and had a great time. What about you? Well, I haven't gone yet, but I'll hopefully be able to make plans in the future. And that's all for today's edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. Thanks so much for joining us and be sure to check ttuhub.net every day for more news. We'll see you next week.